name is Vidhi Kalra Balana and welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. Well firstly guys a very big thank you to all of you for making me reach to 60,000 subscribers that's a big achievement and it's only possible because of your constant love and support so really thank you so much guys. Now coming back to today's video and today's topic well the topic for today's video is Stolfer Samuelson's theorem. Well guys, I know that in the past I've done several videos on international economics like a comparative advantage, absolute advantage and Heckscholen. All these videos have been highly appreciated by you. I'll attach the links in the comment section below. And all of you have requested me to do more of international economics videos. So your wish is my command and I'm back today with one such video. So in this video, I'll be explaining all you need to know about this theorem with the help of diagrams, examples and you know everything and hopefully this video will help you so yeah what are we waiting for let's get into the video also guys don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already so firstly guys let me introduce this very theorem to you and give you a little background on how it came into picture so what happened there was Heckscholen theory if you still don't know what is Heckscholen theory trust me just go and watch out my video this is one of my most loved videos so do do watch it out then you understand HO theory completely. So in HO theory we study that you know a labor abundant country like maybe like India it will of course specialize in the export of labor intensive good that is cloth maybe you know cloth requires a lot of people so it will export cloth whereas a capital intensive country maybe like USA will obviously export capital intensive good for example steel so we will export labor intensive good that is cloth and they will export steel that was HO theory in brief okay now factor price equalization theory said that when we trade you know these two countries would trade it would definitely lead to a movement in the factor prices right the fact prices of labor capital and all these things right now what happened is in what way will international trade would add relative changes in the factor prices would affect the distribution of income in the country basically is what was studied by W.F. Stolper and Paul Samuelson in crux what is the Stolper Samuelson's theorem so this actually is like a um, it was derived from these theories especially HO theory you can call it a subsidiary of the HO theory it is based upon that so that's why I'm saying if you don't know the HO theory go and watch it out once again and here they said that if a country does free trade the benefit would be on the relatively abundant factor whereas it would hurt the relatively scarce factor in the country this is just a simple guys if you have not understood it it's okay we'll go ahead with the video i'll give you examples and i'm sure by the end of the video you will understand this theorem so let me quickly run through the assumptions of this theorem well guys in economics you know we have to assume certain things only then can we you know uh, participate in the theory or make the theory look Real. So assumptions are we are taking two countries where we have two commodities so maybe US and India commodities cloth and steel and of course we have only two factors which is labor and capital we aren't taking anything land or entrepreneur into picture okay there is constant returns to scale well if you don't know constant returns to scale again I've made a video on it I'll attach its link in the comment section below the labor and capital are fully employed okay the next two factors of production are there and both are fixed in supply there is perfect competition in both markets again if you don't know what's perfect competition i made up a video on that as well the labor abundant uh, here we are taking a labor abundant country where uh, capital is scarce the given country where we are going to talk about is labor abundant and capital space scarce we can take our own very country in it okay cloth is labor intensive we all know that and steel is capital intensive again we know that the tot that are the terms of trade are fixed in the countries the factors are mobile in the sectors but they are not mobile between countries like they can't move from country to country and lastly there is no transportation cost because of course if we take that into account a lot of changes would be made so all these assumptions you should know them before beginning the theory so now guys we will come to the crux of this theorem and i assure you if you follow, follow along what i'm talking what i'm speaking you will definitely understand this theorem in one go. So I have drawn this diagram for a simplified, it's a very simplified, you know, diagram in economics books and uh, maybe online also you'll find a very complicated version of this diagram. But my aim is to make you understand this theorem, the crux of this theorem in the most simplest way. So yeah, let's go ahead guys. As I already told you, the given country, what we are talking about is basically a labor abundant country and a capital scarce country, maybe like India, where there's more labor and less of capital. Okay, that is what our assumption is. 
Here, this is an Edgewater box diagram, guys. Here, we are taking A is the origin for labor intensive good, which is the labor intensive good as spoken, it is the cloth, and C is the origin for capital intensive good, which is of course steel. Here, we have taken this A and C. This is a contract curve. This green line basically is a non linear contract curve. Okay, now what we are trying to show is in the absence of trade, when there's no trade happening with the, in the country. We see that production is taking place at point R. I hope all of you can see this point. This is point R. So production is taking at point R. Now, when we start trading, when India starts trading with another country, we see what happens is that labor in, uh, intensive country expands production of cloth and reduces production of steel. Here we are talking about a country which is labor intensive. So now trade is happening. So we would want more of the uh, thing what we can produce more that is cloth. So basically what happens, we will now produce more cloth and reduce the production of steel. Now production will take place at point S. Okay, so from R we have moved to S when we have international trade hitting in our country. Now what happens is now we move to S and we notice guys that the price of labor has also risen in relative or in relation to the price of capital. Of course, there's more demand for labor at that point of time because we want to produce more of cloth. So price of labor rises in relation with the price of capital in that particular country. Also, now follow along guys, resources are directed from steel to cloth. Now we want more, more of cloth. So people will release the people who are working in the steel industry and they will definitely go. As I said, you know, the labor is mobile between sectors. So now they will go and produce cloth because cloth is more in demand when we start trading. Now, the rise in the price of cloth and relation to price of steel, again, similar to how price of labor rises here, we will see price of cloth has also risen in the country in relation to the price of steel. Basically, what we are saying, as I mentioned to you earlier in the segment, that, you know, now price of labor has risen. So, absolute income of labor in the national income rises because now price of labor has risen, right? So, the income rises in relation to the total national income. So that is what basically stolper Samuelson theorem is for you guys. In, when we have international trade, the benefit will come to the labor, uh, to the abundant factor, which in our country is labor, and it will hurt the scarce factor because the price of uh, capital now has fallen because in relation to labor, we have seen price of labor has risen, price of cloth has risen. Now labor's price increases due to which we see that absolute income of labor has risen. So this is the benefiting factor, whereas capital is the losing factor. So I hope you have understood, understood what basically is this theorem. So basically, guys, let us run through the implications of the stolper samuelson theory quickly. Number one, increase in the welfare. Of course, the labor, the abundant factor, basically. If labor is the abundant factor, that is definitely going to benefit in the country. It will increase the welfare of all the labor. Secondly, improvement in the income distribution. Of course, it will lead to a shift in the income distribution and maybe it will also achieve the equitable uh, income distribution. And lastly, strategy of export promotion. Of course, trade is something which is encouraged by all countries and we will definitely tend to promote export through this, trading through this rather than, you know, uh, substituting the import. It is better for export promotion and that is what we will achieve. We will achieve growth and stability if we do that. So lastly, guys, coming to the limitations or criticisms, well, in economics, you know, the best of the best theories have been criticized and have their limitations. So let's quickly run through them. So basically, we were thinking that because of this theorem, the wage inequality has you know, fallen. We just spoke about the implication, right? But in actual, in Latin America, it was observed that wage inequality actually rose because of this theorem. And uh, we were assuming that wage equality has, inequality has fallen. Secondly, guys, workers are mobile. That was assumed, right? They can shift from steel industry to cloth industry. But what work they do in the steel industry and what work they have to do in the cloth industry is totally different. They might not have the knowledge of skill. But here we've assumed that, yes, they can easily shift. And lastly, here, no transportation cost has been assumed, which definitely is very difficult to even think of. So basically, guys, I'll just tell you a very small, um, you know, hack. In economics, the limitations are basically the assumptions. Whatever we, we assume, they can, you know, turn around and become as the limitations. So if you want to learn more of it, you can just run through the assumptions once again. So that's all about this theorem, guys. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, comment in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.